Hi everybody and welcome back to the Monawa Live YouTube channel and today we're going to be talking about This is not a burial, it is a resurrection and this is a film written and directed by Lemohang Musese and he is a Basutu filmmaker. This is going to be the first local yet non-South African film I'm going to be reviewing. It is a Basutu film or a film from Lesotho. Initially I had planned on reviewing other films before it but then it's currently streaming at the Devon International Film Festival and you can watch it virtually there. And and guys if you have friends or if you know anyone who is interested in African cinema just beyond South African films because it's not just going to be South African films that I'm going to speak about on this channel it's also, also going to be other African films please suggest my channel to them because they might also like what they will find on this channel This is known to be one of Mary Tyler's final performances and she's joined by Jeremy Fugeng, Mahwana Ndewele and Tseko Mnaheng. This film is basically about a widow who, apart from having lost her entire family, has lost the last person in her life, which happens to be her dear son. And as she goes through grieving, she's practically just waiting for death or rather is literally wishing death upon herself. One of her final wishes, what she would really love to happen when she dies is to be buried alongside her entire family within the village or rather the land which her entire family was buried in only to find out that actually this village is about to be evacuated because their plans to actually be flooded and build an entire dam where the land once was she doesn't take this pretty nicely and the events of the film practically evolve around that now before i get into the review if you're new to this channel please click on the subscribe button and also click on the notification bell so that you'll be notified each and every time i release a video and if you're a returning subscriber you know what to do please give this video a thumbs up so my videos become more discoverable and shared with as many people as you possibly can. So having watched the film, this film is basically about grief. It's about grieving and the ruthlessness of time. And as they put it in this film, progress, how things need to carry on. The only constant thing in life is change, right? How things will always change no matter how much you resist and you just have to basically learn to adapt. And this is what the character Mando, who's played by Mary Twilight, basically has to deal with throughout the entire film that she must adapt, she must let go of her land, the land that has fed her, the land that has raised her, the land that is basically technically her entire identity and history. And now she's faced with this harsh reality that she must move because something bigger something bigger than all of them needs to happen and basically so it frames progress in in such a way where like anything else in life there's a duality there's two sides of the same coin the progress needs to happen obviously because a dam needs to be built and if a dam is built it's for the benefit of a lot of people beyond that village but at the same time these people have been here for a very long time this land has taken care of them it has fed them it's their identity and put your, putting yourself in their shoes that's quite difficult to just pack up your bags and leave it especially the family that's buried within that land. And that's where I want to come in when, when, when talking about this film. First of all, I enjoyed this film for the most part. I found it to be a pretty decent film, but that's almost kind of the most it does. It does a decent job at talking about these themes that it's exploring, that being grief, that being time, the ruthlessness of time and just progress in general. It does a better job in my opinion when it comes to actually tackling the progress thing because it doesn't do a bad job necessarily. It doesn't do a bad job. It lacks conviction in exploring these themes that it's talking about. The way in which it was told, it could have had more conviction. It was a bit mild in how they chose to deal with the themes that, they, that this film is talking about. More so the grief part of the film, which is, is not quite a good thing when the entire film, most of the film is actually revolving around that but moving on to other things like the cinematography so film was shot well i don't know whether it was shot at a 4x3 aspect ratio but it is presented to us at a 4x3 aspect ratio now for people who don't know what that means most most screens in life whether it's your phone whether it's your television your laptop most screens 
most not all are 16 by 9 that means the width of the screen is a ratio of 16 to the height of 9 this film on the other hand is 4 by 3 i couldn't tell while watching it that okay when is this film set some of the things in the film that happen they make you feel like it was set sometime pre-2000 but then the things that are pretty modern in the film they're also just the, even the the, the the wardrobe in general it was pretty modern like the clothes that are worn are post 2010 stuff but then because of just that there's no clear indication of when does this film actually take place but also even just the timeline within the film of how things are happening one minute you told we're approaching christmas but then somewhere there you told something about it being may and then it's 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 once again i can't tell whether maybe it was time has just passed but when it comes to actually and maybe that's the entire thing playing around with the whole time aspect since the film is about progress and time and just how time will always march on maybe the filmmaker was intentional and about not making it clear that first of all what time is this film set in but also secondly how is the time even within the film how is it progressing how how many months have passed ever since this event happened when when in the next scene uh, is it tomorrow is it a week later is it years later what's happening now getting into the actual cinematography it's a very beautiful film it's a very beautifully shot film it showcases the landscapes of Lesotho and how beautiful the country is and it has some very visually pleasing and visually stylish shots but then there are moments where there's some questionable shots and and I wanted to say this earlier on this feels like a quasi art film if you're into art films you might like this but the reason why I'm bringing this up even is because when it comes to art films it's very difficult to even speak on them because you never know you never know whether was this the filmmaker's intention or was this the filmmaker's failure or shortcoming and there were a few shots like I said in this film that were pretty questionable where, and by questionable I mean like this is like well you could have done another take of that like this is clearly not a good shot some camera movements were like unjustifiably weird there was literally a shot where it feels like the camera was being removed from the tripod while the shot is actually still being recorded and it was like once again, because like I said, art films, you never know. You never know whether that's the filmmaker's intention. But that, that's just, you know, for me, that's just, you know, clear technical issues that could have been, you know, handled. And there were a few of those shots in the film. But overall, it's a very visually pleasing film. It's shot very beautifully. The key standout aspects of this film for me specifically was the score and the sound design i love how they handled that 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 for me i feel like it rivals the cinematography of the film just how they use sound design to convey emotion thoughts state of mind the score is also like it matches almost every scene and every shot that i was pretty um i was like oh this is very amazing um but yeah for for the most part the film is it's a it's a good film it's a good film i'm sure some people pretty much like it very much i i didn't hate it but i'm also like i don't have a, a huge affinity to it and then when it comes to the acting the performances once again much like the film in general or how i felt about the film in general i found the act performances to be pretty decent at best there was nothing striking and once again that's not necessarily a bad thing you know depending on the type of film for me for this film I wasn't expecting out of the world performances. I wasn't expecting anything actually. I was just expecting a good movie. And for the most part, this is a good movie. I do obviously have my issues with it here and there as I do with almost any film under the sun. Uh, I'm sure most people actually enjoy this film, probably way more than I enjoyed it. I was looking forward to this film. I've been looking forward to it for a few months actually now. And I wanna say upon arrival and upon watching, it was, it was, it was a good film. It was an enjoyable film. I do feel like it could have been better with the things that I mentioned earlier on. And then one of the things that I do feel like once again could have been, you know, handled a bit better, could have been easier was the pacing or the editing of the film in this case where I don't feel like it's two hour runtime is justified for what happens within the film and what's being communicated vocally and also visually. Speaking of things that are being communicated vocally, the film has a narrator. I don't know how I feel about that, to be quite honest with you. Um, I didn't feel like the, the narration added to the film. You know how it's, people are always like, avoid having a, a narration in your film. If you, if you think you want to do a film with narration, you can always do a better film without narration. I don't necessarily subscribe to that. I don't mind narration in films, but I do feel like, well, if there's no need, don't put it in there. And for this film, I kind of feel like it didn't help the film really and especially in the style in which it was delivered it was delivered in a very poetic and 
methodical way if that's even a word and i don't know man like i said i don't feel i i, I didn't feel like this was a a worthy thing to be included in the film throughout the entire runtime that is at some parts it made sense but for the most part it was like it, it did interrupt the pacing of the film it did interrupt the flow and the rhythm of the film sometimes you'd be in the film and you're like okay okay and then it'll cut away to the narration and you're like okay I guess this is what we're doing. And then another thing to look out for is the film is in Sesotho, like throughout, like the entire film is just in Sesotho, which is not a problem. It shouldn't be a problem. There are subtitles that are pretty accurate, but I had a problem with the subtitles or rather how they were presented or displayed. The subtitles are white with no borders, no outlines. So in some shots, it makes it very difficult to read what's being said because sometimes there'll be, the visuals will be white. Whatever's actually playing is white, but then there's white text on that. And and I feel like of all the things I've mentioned within this film, if there's one thing that I feel can be done about that, it's that. Like it's a very simple thing. It's not even a creative, it's not a very creative point of criticism. This is just a technical thing that says nothing necessarily about the film, but more about how it can be presented better to the audience. Usually yellow subtitles are, are better with a black border or a black outline, whatever you want to call it. Yellow with a black border, or even if it's white, just try and, this is even for you, if you're doing something that needs subtitles, try and put a border around your subtitles subtitles or at least background on the subtitles so that the subtitles are white and there's a white background they don't fade away into the background if the the visuals are the same color as the subtitles whatever the color your subtitles are they don't fade away into that same color so always try to keep that in mind you can go check it out it's currently screaming at the Durban International Film Festival if you've watched it please comment down below and let me know what you think if you haven't watched it go check it out you can go watch it you can go stream it wherever you are at any moment as a matter of fact yeah yeah, this was a film I was looking forward to and I, 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 I'm not underwhelmed. That's basically about it, guys. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, like, and share. If you didn't hate this video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps my videos become more discoverable. If you hated this video with every fiber of your being, just ignore it and pretend it doesn't exist. Um, that's basically about it, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Baby,